Happy New Year, guys. New Year. <laughs> I gotta learn how to say that. I keep saying New Year's. Hey, guys, what's going on? First video of 2020, and I'm like, I got so much going on. Super excited for it. But I want to say, guys, I hope you guys had a great New Year. I hope everybody, you know, starts the New Year off on a positive note, on a more intuitive note. And, you know, doing what you got to do for you. I hope everybody has a prosperous year and, and more to come after that. You know, I mean, we've come this far, you know, and I know a lot of us have fought a lot of silent battles over the past year, let alone the past probably decade. But, you know, guys, it's a new year. Let's let's bring it in. Let's keep it going. And let's continue to, you know, to continue fighting for our journeys. I mean... I don't know about y'all, but I'm just like so stupid excited. So we just gonna get right into it. <laughs> Guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about the toxic dance, the, the tango between the codependent and the narcissist. Now, you know, we learned in my other videos that the narcissist, the codependent can be anyone in this dynamic, okay? be anyone in the family, it could be anyone in your circle, it could be anyone at work, it can be anyone anywhere, anytime. But I'm going to primarily focus on romantic relationships, okay? I'm going to specify that. This is for romantic relationships. But if you find familiarity with the patterns and the dynamics, then you can apply it to any part of your life because chances are what the narcissist and a codependent does in a dynamic it doesn't really matter who the person is or you know who who plays what role if the patterns are similar to anyone then you just need to correlate the patterns with the person their actions all right but everyone knows in romantic relationships that type of relationship that type of dynamic is different from anyone who is a family member or a friend or you know so forth and so on but and, you know, in, in, a, in a dynamic between the narcissist and a codependent, we're going to go over, you know, why they're so attracted to one another, okay? Why they blend with one another, okay? Why the patterns are consistent. And by consistent, I mean why the toxic cycle is continuously ongoing, especially even after a breakup. Those are the dynamics of that breaking up, getting back together, breaking up, getting back together, breaking up, getting back together, but failing to realize that the toxic dynamics are the main cord that lies in between the codependent and the narcissist. That toxicity, that toxic dynamic is what keeps the relationship ongoing, okay? Everyone knows a toxic relationship is hazardous to your health, so... If that's the kind of dynamic that someone carries with another individual as to why that person is continuously in their life, then that's the kind of pattern, the kind of cycle that really needs to be broken. All right. So let's just get into it and take it from there. Now, most would obviously agree that the relationship between a narcissist and a codependent person is dysfunctional. All right. These are people with normality that see the dynamics between the two. But oddly enough, the relationship between the two is actually balancing between the two, all right? The codependent is the people pleaser, the fixer. The narcissist is the controlling one, the one who takes the lead, the head of the line. So if you basically put the two together, instead of it being like oil and water that it doesn't mix, it actually meshes very well with each other. But the dynamics between the two during this dance eventually leads to conflict, drama, all kinds of nonsense that's unnecessary. It leads to emotional neglect, physical, maybe even physical abuse, and psychological abuse. Now, as we've learned that the codependent and the narcissist share something in common, they both lack a sense of self, okay? They, they lack a sense of identity. A codependent is someone who was not properly loved as a child. They learned to earn their love. Therefore, they take that, they internalize that, and they go, when they get into relationships, 
they feel that if I give you what you want, if I give you what you feel it is you need, you're going to in turn give me love. I'm going to earn that love from you. A narcissist, however, takes that attitude and it kind of is reversed in that I'm going to take whatever I can because it's about me. Since I was not loved as a child the way I should have been, now I'm all out for myself. Therefore, I'm just going to take. Now, the reason why this dynamic, this relationship blends so well is because the codependent in the relationship is giving. They're the people pleaser. They're the fixer. They're the self-sacrificing ones. Okay. They look to serve others. Okay. In hopes that in return, they're going to get that love in return. Okay. Because that's what they were raised to believe. In that same relationship, the narcissist is getting their supply. They're getting their ego stroked. They're getting their ego boosted because if you got a people pleaser and you got someone who's willing to give you and do every and anything to make you happy because it makes them happy that you're happy and it seems, it appears that you're appreciative of that and you throw them a few breadcrumbs, now, okay, yeah, you know, I'm gonna throw you a little something for doing that. That little action right there makes the codependent believe that you actually love them, that you actually appreciate them, you know, and that you're giving them a sense of validation because they've earned your love, all right? And it's really sad because, first of all, you know, they're, they're both, I mean, listen, you're not born codependent. You're not born a narcissist, okay? You are created to be that way. You are formed to be that way. So who's to say who's wrong in the dynamic? You know, especially when this is something that has been taught in your environment. But it meshes between the two because you have one who wants just a little inkling of love and you have another who's willing to suck all of that energy at, and all they have to do is just throw a few crumbs at the other person you know i don't have to work nearly as hard to get what i want from you because you're willing to do any and everything to make me happy i don't even give you that much to begin with and yet you're still here so I can do whatever I want. I can say whatever I want. And all I got to th do is throw a few I love yous. Um, I care about you. You know, maybe do a few nice things. But I'm going to limit myself because I shouldn't have to even go as far as being vulnerable with you. Because you rely on me just to be here. Okay, that is the dynamic between the two. And the codependent doesn't realize that it's abuse because that is manipulation. What attracts the codependent to a narcissist is their, their boldness. The narcissist apparently has high self-esteem. They have confidence, okay? But all that really is, is an inflated ego. The codependent doesn't realize that. They're just looking at it like this is who you actually are. When in reality, it's a mask that the narcissist is wearing, okay? Because that's what the narc does to lure people in. They give a false sense of reality. They walk, they walk around with masks like they have the utmost highest confidence when the reality is, is that they have an ego that's extremely fragile, all right? But in this dynamic, the narcissist is taking advantage of the codependent's insecurities. Once the narcissist learns the codependent and they learn the ins and outs, the insecurities, they know how to play the game, they know how to master the puppetry, which in turn leads to conflict and drama, especially if the codependent is picking up on certain things and they're noticing certain things, like if they're gonna stand up for themselves or if they notice things that they don't like and the narcissist is not keen on losing control, what they're gonna do is they're gonna flip it and they're going to basically make the codependent appear to be the crazy one, the irrational one, the erratic one. They're going to use all kinds of tactics. Look at my other videos. 
You'll see all the types of tactics that they use, okay? And they'll make the, the codependent feel like they're the ones who are one, are the crazy ones. Two, they'll even make the codependent feel like they're the ones being the narcissist because they're the ones who are asking for too much. They're the ones who are, you know, creating too much friction in the relationship when in reality, you're giving them breadcrumbs and they're, they're questioning that. <laughs> Listen, here's the bottom line, all right? Because not every relationship is a codependent narcissistic relationship, all right? Maybe you just dealing with an asshole who doesn't know how to properly be in a relationship, okay? But if you notice certain things, certain patterns, certain signs, certain symptoms, if you see yourself questioning yourself, not even questioning the other person, but you're questioning your own sanity. You're questioning if you're the one who is doing something wrong or you're the one who's not, you know, not fulfilling anything within the relationship. But listen, do the research because at the end of the day, this type of dynamic, though it meshes, it's extremely toxic and it's extremely hazardous. And the issue of it is, is that if it's not approached and if it's not taken care of, you're going to be liable to fall right back into it. You're going to be liable to be convinced to go right back into the relationship. I've gone over this in my videos. The tactics that narcissists use, the the hoovering tactics, the the things that they'll tell you, oh, I've changed, it could be different this time. It will not change. Do you understand me? It won't change. And I'm getting very stern with it because you know something? This type of dynamic is very, very, very toxic, okay? It'll screw up your mind. It'll screw up your thoughts on love. It'll screw up how you feel about people. It'll keep you extremely guarded. It'll deplete you. It'll restrict you. You won't be able to have a healthy relationship with other people if you continuously allow this type of toxic person to come back into your life. So guys, <laughs> the dance between a narcissist and a codependent, you know, you start off doing the tango, very seductive, very, very exciting, very, you know, you're, you're into it. And all you're going to end up doing is dancing straight off a cliff. Okay. That'll be the end result of it. And chances are, it will be the narcissist that throws the partner off the cliff and will at the end of the day cry as the victim even though they were the ones who who did it themselves so you know if you notice listen <laughs> i cannot express this enough this is why i do my videos this is why i try to cover every single detail of everything because you can discern the patterns you can check it all so let's bring in 2020 narcissist free. Let's bring it in toxicity free. Let's bring it in with positivity, you know, and using our intuitions more. All right. Let's bring the new year in with healthy patterns, healthy lifestyles, healthy relationships, intuition, discernment. Okay. Pay attention to the signs. Watch people closely if you have to. Do what you need to do because remember, you got to protect your peace. Your peace, your sanity, your health, those are all the most important thing and should be top priority on your list. All right, guys? So my first video of 2020, looking forward to doing more. You guys already know I'm still working on some other things, but I definitely, definitely am looking forward to putting up another video for you guys. And until then... Namaste.